Um, my name is Lilian Wambua once more. Not Mwamba, Lilian Wambua. And I work for the World Organization for Animal Health. Just by a show of hands, how many people have heard of the World Organization for Animal Health? Oh, everybody. Oh, majority. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Um, and I'm going to be giving some uh, animal health and environmental health from the war perspective. Uh, but also, I uh, will dwell quite a bit on the quadripartite perspective of One Health. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will make an attempt uh, to uh, tell you what WOA does and its contribution to One Health. I'll also tell you about the Quadripartite Alliance for One Health, or what we just call quadripartite. And then the One Health Joint Plan of Action, which is really the takeaway message that I want you to, to carry with you, and uh, what the quadripartite envisions um, through the One Health Joint Plan of Action, and then the national level um, implementation of the same. So Salome said that health is about good living. So I think we can blow our trumpets as well. We have 100 years of um, making sure that animals have good health and good living. So WOA works on um, animal health. We have presence in 182 countries across the globe in the, pre uh, in the context of our delegates, 54 of them in Africa. And we are interested in animal health and welfare. And how we do this, one of the primary ways we do this is through standard setting. So we set international standards very consultatively, guidelines and recommendations uh, for better animal health and welfare. I believing that this should lead to best practices in animal production, healthy animals, healthy people, healthy trade, healthy everything, well-being. Um, noting that 75% of the diseases are, that are of importance to us right now in the One Health space are transmitted to humans from animals, and actually 80% of bioterrorism threats are from animal origin. We have built a wildlife health framework that basically advocates for the prevention or the protection of wildlife health to enhance one health and human health at, at large. And um, we also have strategic partnerships uh, which are around the area of wildlife health as well as one health. And uh, some of these partnerships include the quadripartite, which I'll speak at large about, uh, but also ILRI, uh, CIRAD, and many others. So we do a, a lot of our work through partnerships. And at this point in time, through the uh, collaborative program on wildlife, we are also involved in international guidelines uh, for preventing zoonosis from wildlife. So setting standards again for how best can we prevent the spillover of zoonosis from wildlife, be it through bushmeat trade or just you know, any interactions uh, with wildlife. Um, we also have a global animal health surveillance system that some of you may know about, the WAHI system, that's the World Animal Health Information System, where our members voluntarily report on animal health issues in their countries, including zoonosis. But also recently we developed the, the WAHI Wild, which is a platform that countries can also self-report on wildlife health, uh, wildlife diseases in, in their specific countries. Over and above that, we have a network of reference laboratories and collaborating centers uh, to assist our member countries in, in uh, tackling animal health issues. So I want to draw us now to the drivers of pandemic risk. I think we all know them, so I will not overly preach. But then we see that some of the environmental issues that we are here for are actually 
you know, part and parcel of the drivers of pandemic risk, looking at agricultural expansion, looking at habitat encroachment and deforestation, wildlife trade, all these things are driving pandemic risk. And if you look um, at the bottom, you will see that the result of that is actually impacting on environment and ecosystem. So the environmental degradation caused by human activities actually impacts uh, on the health of humans and animals, and that's compounded by several other factors, including the cl climate crisis, um, leading to, um, you know, vector borne diseases, you know, occurring in places where they never used to occur, as well as limiting food security, which again speaks back to the um, social aspects of, uh, social and economic aspects of health. Uh, and so maintaining the ecosystem through, through maintaining ecosystem health through conservation of the natural uh, environment is very important in preserving biodiversity. And so what did the quadripartite do? The quadripartite, um, journey of the quadripartite began way back in 2010 with what we call the tripartite. So this was an alliance between FAO, um, UNEP, and war, and recognizing all those drivers of pandemic risk. Um, by 2022, after COVID, UNEP joined the tripartite to form the quadripartite. And now we have uh, basically a set of international organizations that attempt to lead uh, or to, you know, to create a global framework that can assist countries to deal with One Health or One Health threats. And so just to mention that uh, the quadripartite, um, you know, came together and signed the what we call the One Health Joint Plan of Action, which is a global framework aimed uh, at better predicting, better preventing, better detecting, and better responding to health threats to improve the health of animals, humans, plants, and the environment in general while contributing to sustainable development as per the UN SDGs. Um, I think Al Alex already did a great job at presenting this uh, diagram here that was an attempt basically to redefine One Health. And for a very long time, One Health was about three disciplines. In fact, sometimes about just two disciplines. That is human health and animal health. But the evolution has happened in such a way that now we recognize that the environment is actually the bedrock of One Health. Because with a healthy ecosystem, with healthy environments, then you can have healthy animals and healthy humans. And um, a lot has been said about society, but what this diagram here shows us is that One Health is gonna be a whole of society effort. Whole of society, as we've, we've heard from the beginning, uh, the, the, the framing presentations talked about the importance of communities, both rural, urban, mobile communities, the importance of you know, taking country context regional context, as well as, you know, what um, uh, Salome was talking about, the aspects of inclusivity, equity, and access to health. So all of that, including our non-governmental organizations, the civil society, uh, become very important actors. And so One Health is not about four organizations sitting, I don't know, in France, in Geneva, in where, it, it, it's a collective effort that comes, that cuts across all levels of society. Um, and so, with that in mind, the quadripartite uh, came up with this document that I would really urge each and every one of us to, you know, since we have nowhere else to go, as we've been told, <laughs> to familiarize it. You know, just read it like a novel. It's quite nice, it, and it's short and succinct. Uh, the One Health Joint Plan of Action, which you can access 
um, through that link. If you just type WOA or UNEP or WHO or FAO, you can get access to this. But does it mean that there was no One Health going on before the One Health Joint Plan of Action? No. So what the Joint Plan of Action aims to do is it's action-oriented, as, as the word uh, puts it across. It's about coordinated action for One Health. And the way the document is arranged is that is there is a scene setting, there is the action framework, uh, which is basically linked to a theory of change, and then there are action tracks uh, rotating around all sections of One Health. And the fourth part is on government, governance and implementations, as some people mentioned earlier that they didn't hear about governance. I'll talk about it and the investing in One Health. And so the theory of change, ooh, okay. Let me just say that um, there are three pathways to how we can apply One Health. There's got to be the highest level of buy-in through policy, through legislation, through advocacy at various levels, and sustainable financing. Then we have to capacitate um, you know, our countries through organizational development to implement One Health. And lastly, we need all of you that are in this room to generate the data and the evidence that shows that there is actually gains at uh, that come from putting or, or, you know, implementing One Health. So not just talking about One Health, but where is the data, where is the evidence that shows that One Health works. So in the very limited time, I'll go through the six action tracks of the Joint Plan of Action. It aims at enhancing capacities uh, to strengthen health systems. The second action tracks, looks at actions that we can take to reduce the risk of emerging and re-emerging diseases. These are like Ebola, these are like Rift Valley fever, you know, those emerging and re-emerging pandemic of or zoonosis of pandemic and epidemic potential. Then the third action track is on the neglected diseases, the ones we know, rabies, um, tuberculosis, and other vector-borne diseases that we all know about. Fourth action track speaks to strengthening the, the, the assessment, management, and communication of food safety risks. And the fifth is on the silent pandemic of AMR. And lastly, but very important, is the aspect of integrating environment into One Health. And I want to focus on this just for the next few minutes to say that in this action track, six on environmental dimensions of One Health, the overarching theme is to protect, restore the biodiversity, prevent degradation of ecosystems and the wider environment to support the health of people, animals, plants, and the environment itself. And under this, there are like four themes that we could think about how to the theme around degradation of, of ecosystems. Again, how can we really mainstream, now that we are sitting here, the health of the environment and ecosystems into the One Health approach? Realistically, what actions can we take? And thirdly, environmental knowledge, including indigenous knowledge, and including also the hard data and evidence that comes from research, and lastly, creating that one, one Health Interoperable Training Program. Um, so, I think, do I stop? I should keep going. So, if you, if you now go into the One Health Joint Talk Plan of Action, there are actually 37, no, 34 actions that can be realistically undertaken of course, depending on the priority of the country to actually tackle the, the sixth action track on environment. 
So again, I draw back your attention to the One Health Joint Plan of Action. You can go straight into the six action track. Look at the 34 um, actions that can be, that have been thought, pre-thought, and maybe see how well they fit within the discussions that we will be having. Um, how do we see the One Health Joint Plan of Action being undertaken in country level? Again, we recognize that a lot of activities are going on, and so it is not about reinventing the wheel, but this is about, um, you know, raising the bar, uh, starting by understanding what has been done, a situation analysis. Who are the stakeholders? I know Kohesa has been doing quite a bit around stakeholder mapping and analysis, and I think we are going to do a lot of that. Uh, but also understanding that One Health depends a lot on the governance mechanisms. So we review within our countries our governance mechanisms on One Health and how well do they integrate environment, for example, and other wider you know, stakeholders, including communities. Secondly, would be to strengthen that governance mechanism. Um, very good discussions this morning talking about you have this high level, of course we want the high level buy-in, but how does that link to the grassroots level? How, how do we see this happening? Uh, what, how can we ensure that there are clear terms and reference to those stakeholders? Thirdly, uh, how then do we implement what we come up with? And fourthly, um, how do we monitor progress? Yeah, so we need to think about these things in advance. So I want to stop there because I'm conscious that I have overrun my time and just say that um, we could look at the One Health Joint Plan of Action as an overarching framework um, that can help us to conceptualize the core dimensions of environment and ecosystem health. We can just dive into there, get some ideas and see how well we can tackle the, the core dimensions of environment. And just to say that the quadripartite organizations are keen to see, you know, country, countries adapt and operationalize One Health. Thank you. <laughs>